Right, it's now nearly 8 o'clock, isn't it? On Thursday night. I am just finishing putting the cams into the cylinder head before I put the cylinder head on the car and I've done this because I want to let the lifter trays bleed down before it goes on the car because the way I'm setting up this camshaft that you can see me playing with now is a bit odd as you've heard me describe in all the previous videos that we've done this is the M50B25 exhaust cam well it's actually an intake cam which I'm using as an exhaust so let me just briefly run down the last of these torque settings here right so finally what we have here is the M54 intake cam in this side and the M50 B25 exhaust cam in this side and what we've got there is standard timing marks on the M54 cam you can see the two dots on the camshaft that's pretty much at top dead centre there what we've got here if I rotate this cam around this is a big crunch point will it turn yes it will turn lovely this cam, if it were sitting as an intake cam, would be sat something like that. So you can see the, the marks are pointing upwards on it. But if you look at the frontal lobes here, anybody who's worked with these engines before will know that when the engine's at top dead centre, the lobes should point upwards and towards one another, roughly speaking. So I'm going to clock this cam by 62 degrees. In other words, I'm going to turn it about yay much so that it will sit basically the wrong way around for an intake cam but the right way around is an exhaust cam so the lobes then are pointing towards one another and the sprocket should then line up we've had the sprocket machine we've got the nose of the vanos machined on this side like you've seen in our previous videos and i'm pretty much ready now to let this sit and bleed down the lifters so that i don't get any valve interference when i go and put the head on let me just explain that a little bit so if i turn the head upwards you'll see right now We've got some valves which are poking down two exhaust ones, two intake ones, sorry, two exhaust and two intake ones. If you were to put this cylinder head on, there is a chance that these might touch the pistons. Now, I think I'm probably okay because my lifters were completely empty when I put it together, but I'm not taking any chances with that. So I'm going to leave this sitting here now. What I'm going to continue to do now, the bottom end's pretty much together, is get the timing gear on this side of the engine. So the chain of the guides and the valve cover, uh, the timing gear cover with the seal can go on this side. Uh, and then yeah, I think we are not far away then from putting a head on the engine and then putting, no we'll put the sump on first I think because once the timing case covers on the front we can put the sump on. Fucking sweet mate, we nearly got an engine, okay we've got a head which is roughly fucking put together. <sighs> Pretty knackered, but we're going to get there. It's been four days so far, with one day lost because I was an arse and that's my fault. Lessons learned. Okay, so I'm putting the front timing case cover on right now. Now, I've got new gaskets on this, and they are quite tricky to, to get to hold on. So, obviously, I'm doing this upside down, and there are two dowels up the top. Uh, there's one around about here somewhere. There it is there, uh, which you can sort of hook the gasket onto. And... That doesn't look right at all. You shouldn't be poking it like that, should it? Oh, what the fuck? Is it the wrong gasket? I don't know, it might be. I'll take it all off now. I've fucking balanced it all on there then. I've got one new gasket. I've just found out that the new gasket I bought for this side, I think I've cocked up again and bought the M54 one. The old one was fairly good actually. I've just put a bit of the copper stuff on both of them just to try and get them to seal a little bit better. This is going to be a bit tricky because I've got to kind of hold the bolts and get it lined up upside down without it falling out of the way which as you can see already is not easy now there are a couple of dowel pins which uh, the gaskets can sort of sit on and locate to um, but I want to try and get a bolt in at the opposite end of the scale here so if I can get that one in and this one I should then I'm hoping be able to just thread the rest of the bolts in quite easily that's located on the dowels now Right, okay. I've got a whole stack of bolts that look just like that. I then have four slightly shorter ones with a bit of a nipple on the end of it. And then I've got four much longer ones. Now the much longer ones are quite obvious. They're going to go in where the case is thicker. And then I can run in all the rest of these littler ones, these smaller ones. And the four other ones that I've got I reckon are going to be for the sump. I have four bolt holes there for the sump. And I'm just going to give them a nip up. They don't want to be crazy tight here. This is really... Apart from the part around the water pump, 
it's just stopping the oil from being sloshed off the chain and coming at the timing case, which is all down here. When I put the sump on, this area here and here is the area where you need to put a little bit of uh, silicon sealant to stop it from leaking through that crack and then outside the uh, the timing case. So I'm just going to get my tool now and uh, tighten them up. Okay, so that's timing case cover on. Now the only thing I've really got to start thinking about is not dropping the timing chain down into the timing case cover. When I turn it over, I'm going to try and make sure that it's wired and guide it through the uh, the head. I'm going to use a bit of that copper wire and make a long extension so I can't drop it. This obviously now is loose. It's around the sprocket at the bottom, but it's... Uh, it's going to just drop back into the case if I'm not careful. I, sped, I, I went all the way around the water pump here and made these ones tight first because I, that's the most important part to me that I really don't want the oil getting mixed with water. So that was the first bit that I did and then I tightened from the inside of the case out. So I started here, here, here and I went here, here, here and here just to keep it all nice and even. And that copper has squelched out a tiny little bit of the sides of the case. Okay, so sump gasket, here we go then. Hopefully we're at the right part this time. We've got both surfaces cleaned up. A bit of silicon in each of the corners where the timing case meets. I'm gonna drop the gasket on. Obviously I've not got the rear main seal cover on yet. Now, uh, there are four longer bolts here. Two of which are for the rear cover, which will actually go all the way through the cover. We'll see that in a minute, these two. These two slightly shorter ones, I believe, are actually rear main seal ones. So they'll go on with the rear main seal. These are going to get some copper grease because this is steel going into an aluminium part again here. They have got a coating on them, it looks just like phosphate coating, but uh, it's old now. So where it's worn off, I will get rust and I'll get an aluminium oxide build up if I don't clean them up at all. So I'm just going to grease them all just to be sure, to be sure, to be sure. Lots of them as you can see. Now I read that you've got to go from the front to the back when you do this, so that's what I'm going to do. Once I get this on, I have waited now long enough for the cylinder head, it can then go on. So the aim for today is to get to that point if we can. It would be nice to leave here tonight knowing that tomorrow we've got to come back up, put the valve covers on and think about, you know, putting all the ancillaries on the engine and then maybe start thinking about putting it back in the car if we get that far, but we shall see. Right, I'm happy with that. I don't need to go mad here. I'm actually going to take the gloves off so I've got clean hands here. I think it's moved a little bit that way. Right, okay, so what I was in the middle of saying there is the torque on these wants to be quite light. I've known this for years, this is one thing I'm confident about. With something like a sump gasket, if you tighten them up too much, you warp the gasket and it just fucking leaks. So these are 8.8 .8 volts. Uh, the interweb has told us to give them 10 newton meters, which is nothing, just that much. I'm gonna follow the instructions and I'm gonna work from front to back. So I'm about to put the head on. Before I did that, I just wanted to make sure that everything was spinning freely. And I didn't have any you know, alarming scores in the bores or anything like that. So I just turned the engine over by hand a few rotations and I've brought it back to a sort of safe point, which is just off of top dead centre mark is where my finger is right now. And the mark on the case is up here. I've rotated the, the car about, I don't know what that is, about 30 degrees anti -clock, uh, sorry, clockwise. And that brings the cylinders down. So when I put the head on it, there's absolutely no chance of any of the valves touching the pistons, which is where we want to be. So I think now the only thing we've got left to do is put a little bit of silicon at the front end of the timing cover case and then put the gasket on. Let's try that now. So the reason I've put a little bit of silicon in there is just to be absolutely fucking sure that I've got a good seal on the edges there. So I've basically wiped off all the excess. And I've just allowed a little bit of silicon just to go in the groove line, just in case there's a discrepancy there. It feels lovely and flat to my fingers, but you never know. So here we have our Victor Ryan silicon uh, cylinder head gasket. Okay. So we've done all our prep. There's no more time for marking about. Let's get the head on and get it tightened up. Okay, so the head is in place. I've got the head on now nice and flat. I've got the chain located off to the side. So I'm now just dropping in the washers for the head bolts, which is going to be a bit tricky if I'm honest. And then I'll be putting the head bolts in themselves.
Right, so I'm going to go, I've got to go 40 Newton meters and then 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Right, what I'm worried about, as you all know, and I've been really paranoid about, is these bolts pulling threads. I've done everything I possibly can. I've lightly oiled the bolts, I've put the washers in, and I've oiled the head of the bolts. I've cleaned the threads of the bolt holes out numerous times. I've chased all the threads and then cleaned them out again. I, I degreased the block. I don't know what more I can possibly do to give myself a good chance of making sure that this goes nice and smoothly. So I'm just going to take my time, I'm going to work my way through it and hopefully we won't have any problems here. So let's start on the first one. So I've nipped them all up so far. So this is going to go at 40 Newton meters. And then off to the next one above them. Okay, so we want to go 90 degrees. I'd like to do it by eye rather than use this fucking thing because I'm worried about holding this right and stopping it and watching that whereas I can watch 90 degrees by eye right it's just fucking 90 degrees the only problem with that is because I'm not using a ratchet I can't get it at bang on 90 degrees I can't get it to hold there see so then I'm what well, I'm coming to here that's too bad a guess, you know what I mean? So what I really should be trying to do is use a ratchet. But I don't know if I've got enough strength to use a ratchet. Didn't sound good, did it? It's only the first 90. So that noise you heard was the threads popping on the cylinder head. Well, no, the threads popping in the engine block. My most feared thing that was going to happen. So uh, yeah, that's uh, knackered basically. I was distraught at that point, but Natalie, being the angel that she is, putting up all my shit, kept me motivated and said to me, "Don't give up." So I'm not going to give up. In the boot down beside me here, we have got another engine block. This is not an aluminium one, this is an M50 B25 cast iron block. So screw you BMW and your crappy aluminium threads, we're going to beat you come hell or high water. I've got new engine bolts coming, we've got new cap head bolts, this time I've got new rod bolts, I've got new cylinder head bolts, I'll tear this down, I'll clean it up, I'll take apart all the hard work that I've done this week. I've already got the head off, so it's not too bad. Let's go for it. Let's build a stroker with a proper block this time.